Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin and on this channel I upload all sorts of different types of videos revolving around true crime, education and psychology related topics. And for today's video I'm back with another psychology video which I know you guys love. Um, so please do keep sending me suggestions if you have any like psychology topics that you'd like me to research and discuss, whether that's sort of lesser known topics like the one I'm doing today or if you're going through like A-levels or your degree and there's a topic you want to kind of have a refresher video on then definitely feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'm always adding to my list of research topics. So for today's video we're going to be discussing a term in psychology called effective forecasting and essentially it is quite um, a basic term that you just don't really hear when you're studying it throughout sort of A level and degree, at least I didn't. So I just thought it was an interesting one to consider. It's definitely quite thought provoking and sort of the research behind it, how it came about and where the research can go from here. Before we get started, I'm just going to zoom through my usual disclaimer that I like to include the start of all my videos, just letting you guys know that I'm not claiming to be an expert in this case or any of the other cases I cover over on my channel. Um, I'm simply piecing together a piece of information that I found online through my own research through sources on the internet. And because only certain sources are accessible to me, it means I may get things wrong, leave things out, or mispronounce things. And especially with psychology videos, I do just like to say that I'm not a professional psychologist at all. Um, I have a degree in psychology, but that does not by any means mean that I'm a qualified psychologist. So all I'm here to do is sort of my aim is to cover the basics and give like a low level understanding and try and introduce these terms to you guys just as much as you're learning I'm also learning as I go along as well so yes but with all that being said we should just go ahead and get started discussing today's topic I am here with my mug if you do see me just sort of gripping something it is my mug here um, it's keeping me warm. So simply put, effective forecasting is giving a prediction of the emotions someone or yourself is going to feel at some point in the future following an event. This can be in a number of different contexts, both positive or negative, such as predicting that marrying someone will lead to your future long-term happiness or, or even expecting to feel discomfort or fearful when you're thinking of an upcoming dentist appointment. And this is something we will typically do on a daily basis without having put any conscious thought or effort into it but it does have a direct impact on the management of our expectations. The concept of effective forecasting was initially researched and defined by two researchers named Timothy Wilson and Daniel Gilbert in the 90s. Their interest in this area had started when they were attempting to understand why we as people may not always feel happiness or satisfaction when we've managed to do something or to have something that we'd wanted, something that at the time of wanting we would have assumed would have led to a positive impact on our emotions so we would have predicted that we would have felt happy or satisfied and this basic act of wanting or desiring sometimes incorporates the concept of effective forecasting so we're assuming that by reaching this desire we will feel some form of positive emotion at the time of wilson and gilbert's research there was already a significant amount focusing on the psychology of decision making and predicting behaviours of individuals, but their research built onto these fields and started introducing a new concept entirely. And as a result of the research over the years conducted to sort of help with our understanding of effective forecasting as a concept, it's typically believed that there are sort of four components to the concept. So the first of these four components is valence, so referring to whether the emotion predicted and subsequently felt is of a positive or a negative nature. The second is the specific emotion or emotions that are felt. The third is the intensity of the emotion or emotions felt. And the fourth is the duration of the emotion or emotions when they are subsequently experienced. And there have been numerous studies focusing on each of these four components and just sort of how we can accurately predict them and whether or not they are accurately predicted, whether they can be. After the early development of the concept, Wilson and Gilbert and some other researchers in around 2002 had set up a research study that placed participants into a simulated dating style game and they were required to predict how they would feel following certain outcomes of this game. And essentially, the majority had predicted that if they'd won the game, they would be in a much more positive mood than if they had lost, and this was accurate for virtually all participants. And the vast majority of studies that have set out to examine the accuracy in our ability to predict our emotions have found that we are generally good at doing so. An interesting study that was carried out by Woodzicker and LaFrance had asked a group of all female participants to predict how they would feel in a job interview if the interviewer had proceeded to ask sexually inappropriate or harassing questions. And the majority of women had predicted that they would feel a little bit fearful, but they would feel mostly anger towards this interviewer. However, 
However, the results of the scenario within the experiment actually found that this was often switched. So the main emotion they reported feeling after experiencing this had actually been fear and just a few of them stating they felt angry. So this would suggest that people are good at predicting their emotions in a general extent, such as being positive or negative emotions. But because of the complexity of our emotions, we seem less likely to accurately predict which specific emotion will be felt the strongest. Interestingly, there had been a piece of research carried out by Gilbert, Pinel, Wilson and some others in 1998 in the early days of the concept that found that people may be good at predicting their emotions in a general sense, but we do have a tendency to overestimate the intensity and duration of our future emotional responses. This study initially referred to this occurrence as something called the durability bias, something that is seemingly a common finding in a research study relating to this concept. However, the idea of a durability bias was soon argued as being sort of an insufficient term to refer to the errors that are found in predicting our future emotions, as it isn't typically just limited to over predicting the duration of the emotion that we'd feel. There are a lot more potential mistakes that people have displayed in their predictions outside of durability. And so the term impact bias was applied, and this term refers to a bias that can cause a person to incorrectly over or under predict the impact an event will ultimately have on their emotions once it has occurred. There were also other errors that were found to be a possibility when people were attempting to predict their emotions and they've been found to have a potentially negative impact on the trust that we have in our own ability to manage our emotional responses. These errors can take any form really, um, including just getting the general emotional response to an event completely wrong. So such as predicting a happy response when in fact getting a sad response, as an example. In 2003, Wilson and Gilbert set out to understand the source of these errors that can lead to such inaccurate predictions. And they narrowed it down to the errors being the result of one or more of the following points. So the first one is misconstruing the event itself, meaning that your expectation of the event may be entirely different from how it actually plays out. The second was framing effects, referring to the biases in our perspective. The third is remembering a similar event that they experienced previously and expecting the reaction to be the exact same. The fourth is mental contamination, so a term referring to the emotions felt in that moment shaping the predictions of our future emotional responses. The fifth is expectation effects, so when you expect one thing and experience something else entirely, such as in previous experiences. Number six is an overall failure to predict or anticipate future emotional states. And number seven is sense-making processes, so something that impacts how someone will feel about something and the subsequent management. So the best example I could find of how these problems may affect our predictions were on positivepsychology.com. So on there they wrote, small errors may be something like expecting to feel anger when you catch your child lying, but in actuality the emotional response is more disappointment. Large errors may be something like predicting to feel happiness on your wedding day, but finding yourself feeling only anxiety. So hopefully that sort of simplifies all of this information that I've just thrown at you a little bit in some examples. And the process of effective forecasting can have a direct impact on our emotions in the long run, mainly in the sense that if we expect an event to make us extremely happy but it ultimately leaves us feeling really disappointed or negative then this continually happening can gradually impact our general happiness. In a wider sense though the impact it can have on our decision making abilities can also affect our happiness in a positive sense. So one example is you're looking forward to your coffee date so much that you decide to get your friend a small but thoughtful gift which delights your friend and rekindles a fulfilling friendship. On the other hand, you could worry so much about what your friend will think of you that you decide to cancel the meetup last minute, upsetting your friend and effectively putting an end to your old friendship. And one paragraph that I read on positivepsychology.com that I thought was interesting to consider in this context was, the decisions that lead to bad outcomes are often the result of flawed decision making, which can happen when any or all of the errors and biases we covered earlier crop up. We should exercise caution when making decisions based on our expectations of future emotions, as we are vulnerable to a number of biased perspectives and misjudgments. And in one article I read, which I will leave linked below, um, it referred to something called focalism being something that leads directly to inaccurately predicting our future emotions following a future event. And the definition of the term focalism provided in the article is we focus too heavily on a single good or bad event when considering how that event will make us feel about our lives. 
One area that I thought would be interesting for any of you who have watched any of my previous psychology videos, namely my personality trait videos, um, I thought it was interesting to discuss some of the potential links that have been found in research between effective forecasting abilities and the big five personality traits. There was a study published in 2016 which found that there may be a link between people scoring high for neuroticism and high on introversion, having a typically more accurate ability to predict the negative emotions they'll feel in the future, whereas those scoring lower for neuroticism show more accurate abilities to predict the positives. And I just thought that was an interesting overlap to sort of end this video on. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm going to end this video purely because I've thrown so much information at you that I feel like you guys probably just need a moment for it to sink in. So yeah, that is where I'm going to end things. Um, I hope you guys found this interesting. Like I said, leave any other topics you'd like me to discuss below. Just little snippets like this. I feel like they're just interesting to have sort of an introduction to so that if you do find them interesting yourself, you can go and research further and look at some more in-depth studies and things that have linked with other psychological terms. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.